I spent most of my life asserting with all certainty that I will never, and I mean never, get a tattoo. Even if someone responded with, never say never, Aisha, I would double down and say, yep, that's true for most things. But in this case, I mean never. I knew that I would never feel so strongly about something that I would want it permanently living on my skin. Well, the universe has a way of teaching us lessons in what we think we know and understand about ourselves. What I said I would never do for most of my life changed when I turned 50 years old. Now, I didn't turn 50 and then decide to get a tattoo. The political upheaval of the past few years mirrored some of the personal and professional upheavals I would face. The most impactful reckoning that I had resulted in deciding I would not get one, but two tattoos in just these last few months was my learning to love my body, not just love, but radically love the earthly vessel that houses my spirit. While I appreciate the opportunities to meditate and focus on the intangible parts of myself that I experience as my soul and my spirit, as I grow older, I've become more connected to my physical body. Now we're socialized to disembody and disconnect from ourselves in profoundly troubling ways. Social media and mass marketing have asserted that we need to buy this product or to lose weight or become different, a different physical version of ourselves, all in the name of improvement. About three years ago, I read a book called The Body is Not an Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor. Taylor is a black activist who espouses radical self-love and offers ways to unlearn the harmful, harmful messages we have been socialized into about how our bodies should be. Radical self-love was a new concept to me. I have been content with self-acceptance, which Taylor asserts is simply not enough. It's the bare minimum. There's nothing wrong with self-acceptance, but it is simply a place to begin. What we need to do is love ourselves in our bodies just as they are. Doing so is an act of liberation. Deciding that we are perfect and worthy of love just as we exist is countercultural, subversive even. When we don't buy into corporate capitalist culture, the culture of perfection in a bottle. Here is an excerpt from the book, The Body is Not an Apology. Why the body, Taylor writes, humans are a varied and divergent bunch with all manner of beliefs, morals, and values and ideas. We have struggled to find agreement on much of anything over the centuries just think about how long we argued about gravity and whether the world is shaped like a pizza. But here is a completely non-controversial statement. I think we have consensus around, consensus around you, my dear, have a body. Everything else we think we know is up for debate. Are we spiritual beings? Depends on who you ask. Do humans have souls? Been fighting about that since Aristotle likened souls of fetuses to those of vegetables. But bodies, yep, we got those. And given this widely agreed upon reality, it seems to me if there ever were a place to practice radical self-love and where radical self-love could be a transformative force, the body ought to be that location. Taylor continues, a radical self-love world is a world that works for every body. Creating such a world is an inside job. How we value and honor our own bodies impacts how we value and honor the bodies of others. So what does this have to do with getting art on my body that is permanent, especially after asserting for my entire life I wouldn't? 
Well, one day I decided that I wanted to embrace and embody liberation in a tangible way. And this would happen for me in the form of a tattoo. Now I knew that every one of my close friends who had asked me over the years if I would ever get a tattoo would remind me of my declaration of never, but I didn't care. And in fact, I would be ready for the dialogue of what changed and why a tattoo and why now. Now tattoos have been around for thousands of years. The images you saw of the facts about tattoos in the video just shown was from an exhibit at the Museum of Pop, Pop Culture in Seattle, Washington. I visited the exhibit the day after getting my first tattoo, that of the hummingbird on my ankle. Two months later, I would sit for four hours and receive my second tattoo, that of a butterfly. Now, both tattoos were painful. I am not going to pretend they weren't. The one on my ankle took less than an hour and it was extremely painful. Some of the worst pain I felt in my life because of the delicate nature of the skin on the ankle. The butterfly tattoo, which is much bigger, I prepared myself. I knew it would take longer. I knew that I would be lying on my side and I was told it would take three hours tops, but ended up taking four. The artist told me to be completely still and I prepared myself and if I needed a break to let him know. Now, knowing that he was in charge of something so delicate and so permanent, I decided to use the time to meditate and be one with my body, which would have worked beautifully. Had the artist not requested death metal music at the highest volume to play for the entire four hours. Now, I have nothing against death metal music, but everything for me is contextual. And when needing to be in a state of calmness and meditation, what I am used to as well, delicate chimes or the sound of a bubbling brook. Well, this was the opposite of that. And I still needed to stay still and calm so that I don't make any sudden moves while the artist was painting basically on my arm. It seemed that the universe was testing my meditation skills in an almost comical way. The needle was painful and the loud crashing music was simply not helping me relax. And I knew I chose this, both the pain and the beauty that I know would be the end result. As the artist worked and time passed, I lost track of what was happening, going into a med meditative state without even realizing it. The consistent pain was at times sharp, at times deep, but it was always pain and it was always profound. One of the signs hanging in the tattoo parlor where I was read, what we do is sacred. I thought about that sign and the sacredness of choosing liberation in the form of an artistic expression that has been around for thousands of years. I was present through the pain to the energy of the universe that is a part of everything. The altered state of such pain has been felt by some during childbirth, by some from recovering from a physical trauma or even an emotional one. The pain is needed to get to the other side. When I finally heard the artist say, I'm finished, I got up slowly as I had truly lost track of the hours and was surprised, in fact, when I was told it was four hours that had passed, not three. When I turned my arm to the mirror and saw the finished piece, the butterfly that I had requested that I had requested to appear as if it was landing on my arm, I was mesmerized. I probably stared at it for maybe 30 seconds at this large representation of transformation that now will live on my arm. 
the representation of transformation of a butterfly for me was both literal and figurative of freedom. My arm hours earlier was bare and now displayed art that would be there for the rest of my life. Now, most of my close friends and those who I consider chosen family express their love for the art on my body, both the butterfly and the hummingbird. Now, my mother and my aunt, who I consider like my mother, are two people who were clear in their disapproval. They were not fans of tattoos on anyone, most especially not on me. I laughed it off because really at 50 years old, it's kind of comical to have your mother and favorite aunt shake their heads in disapproval at any decision I make. So while tattoos are more popular than ever right now, there are still folks who stigmatize and look down on tattoos. I recall a story a close friend told me after getting a full sleeve of tattoos on her arm. When her mother looked at the artwork for the first time, she said, you covered up your beautiful skin. My friend looked at her mother and said, I'm revealing what is beneath the skin, showing to the world who I really am. It is not a covering up. It is a revealing. What a beautiful response and one that embodies liberation and a deep connection with her earthly vessel. One that is saying who I am is expressed in the art I carry with me and display. This made me think about women who I have met who've opted for tattoos after mastectomies to cover scars. Some opt for breast implants and tattoos instead of nipples and some opt for tattoos and no breast implant at all. The tattoo covers the area that is now flat where once the breast existed. I came across an article on the website of the National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health, titled Mastectomy Tattoos, an Emerging Alternative for Reclaiming Self by Victoria Reed de Jong and Anne Bruce, and it was published in July, 2020. It is intended for nursing students. Quote, Recent discourses within breast cancer and gendered studies literature suggest some women are challenging post-mastectomy bodies as abject bodies. Tattooing is an emerging body project in contemporary society that can offer women who live disembodied from their post-mastectomized body an alternative. We consider embodied health movements a type of social movement to explore how acquiring meaningful tattoo art over a mastectomized site can be seen as challenging hegemonic gender discourses of the female breast and patriarchal ideals of beauty post-mastectomy. As part of the emancipatory practices, tattooed bodies have historically been used to challenge dominant discourses related to identity and is currently evolving into practices of self-expression, healing, and transformation. As an emerging phenomenon among women, it is important for nurses to understand the prevalence and role of tattoos more broadly and the possible means for women to embody healing and transformation post mastectomy, end quote. I do recognize the gendered language in this quote, and I want to offer that we are talking about bodies with breasts, no matter the gender. How remarkable that the symbolism and embodiment of tattoos have made their way to articles for nursing students about self-expression and healing. As imperfect as the gendered language is, it is a recognition of the self-expression and importance that tattoos can, can represent. This is one of the representations of reclaiming of what it means to be human and exist in a human body. All bodies are beautiful just by virtue of existing. As I read on a t-shirt once, there is no wrong way to have a body. And I will add that there is no wrong way to express how you love and move and exist in your body. Whether you decide on a tattoo or piercings or any other way you want to be, 
know that your body is yours and you are whole and holy and sacred.